This is part 3 of the one motor robot arm which uses three continuously variable transmission clutches to translate the motor drive to three axes. This isn't a totally practical way to make a robot arm, but I wanted to see if it could be controlled electronically and if we could run inverse kinematics on it. Mostly it's an experimental project, although it's a little bit like a hydraulic system which normally has one engine driving a hydraulic pump, and then multiple valves which switch the fluid to multiple hydraulic cylinders. In my case though, the valves are actually continuously variable transmissions which use a ball shaped clutch. As the ball tilts, a larger or smaller part of the circumference runs between two wheels, giving either a reduction or enlargement in velocity. There's also a dead spot in the middle so we can stop a specific axis with no friction. I've used worm gears to lock the axes in place while the clutch is in its dead spot so they don't free wheel. I previously made a two-wheel differential drive robot using this system which worked well, but now I've expanded to three axes. The first one drives the whole robot around on its base which is made from a lazy Susan bearing, the clutch drives a spur gear around the inside of a large ring gear. Axes 2 and 3 drive the shoulder and elbow of the robot. Two drive shafts exit the gearbox at the top, equally spaced from the centre of the robot. I then used a series of bevel gears to make a differential drive system that translates the motion to the shoulder and elbow axis. When both outputs run in the same direction, it moves the shoulder, and when they move in opposite directions, the difference between them moves the elbow. This also means that we get the torque from both outputs driving the shoulder where more force is required. There's quite a bit of backlash in the system though, which is down to the gaps between the gears which add up. We're going to try and control the robot electronically in this video using servos to drive the clutches and feedback on the joints so we can position them. I'm using high-tech HS805 BB Plus servos which are pretty hefty, and these are the same ones that I used in the two-wheel version with the same clutches. I'm using one of my cycloidal drive gearboxes to drive this whole thing and you can check out that development in my channel. It's driven by a brushless motor that sits on the back of it, so I've made a speed controller which is an Arduino Uno with a pot to control the speed, a battery to power it, and an RC car speed controller. And this is actually a speed controller rather than a current controller, which means it will try and maintain a constant speed even if it drives more current into the motor. So I can turn up the speed to full, and that seems to work pretty well, and we can see that motor being driven round, driving the shaft. So the first thing we're going to do is use the servo to drive the axis, and I'm using a pulley attached to the servo to drive a pulley I already put on the axis. They're pretty easy to move, so the servo is going to be more than strong enough, and there's a slight increase in torque there due to the servo pulley being smaller. I'm using a LiPo, a separate one, to power these servos and also an Arduino Uno with the servo library. So for now I've just wired in an analog pot, and as I turn it, it outputs a servo command to turn the servo. So we can get it wired up and see if it works. I've got a little tensioner on the pulley on the axis so I can pull my strings tight, and I'm using shark fishing line to string this up, which doesn't stretch at all. So with rudimentary servo control it looks like that clutch is pretty easy to operate and my strings stay nice and tight, so that seems to be working pretty effectively. And you can see that I can vary the speed there by varying the position of the servo and the position of the axis. And that means I can decelerate or accelerate as I want to, or go full speed. So we've got a nice variable speed control with the dead spot of course in the middle. But to position the arm where we want, we need some feedback, so I've got an additional potentiometer which fits right into the bottom of the arm, and that goes onto the base in the centre of rotation, and the arm of the pot attaches to a base fixed onto the gear it runs on, and that means I can get feedback as I turn the base, and now we can position the arm. So now we've got a simple little algorithm that compares the two pots, and drives the servo in either direction, so that it achieves its position and both pots get as close to the same position as they can. And I've done this proportionally, so I'm taking the difference between the two, which means it actually decelerates as it gets there, so you can see that nice deceleration and the clutch slowly moving to its dead spot as the two pots come into sync. So looking at a graph of the two pots, we can see the blue line is me turning the knob and the red line is the pot on the axis, you can see that basically they get towards each other closer and closer, and as I'm using the difference to drive the servo, the servo slowly changes its position to decelerate the axis as it gets there. Now we do have that dead spot on the axis, so they never achieve exactly the same position, and that's just down to the mechanics of the dead spot of that axis, because it doesn't drive all the way until the servo gets to its dead spot essentially, it, at some point it stops and it can't go any further. 
So I'm using shielded cable on the pot now because I was picking up some nasty interference from various things including the brushless motor and I do have a filter as well to try and get rid of any extra noise. I made a specific video on filtering servo motions to slow them down so no matter how harsh the input is or how sharp it is the servo motion comes out really smooth and I'm using the same type of filter here to filter the pots. I was picking up quite a lot of noise from the fluorescent lights I'm using for filming and also the brushless motor. So I've just got the same sort of filter filtering that pot data by a little bit before I use it. That's why my lines look nice and clean on the plot. So check that video out as well. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video sponsor, which is AI Camp. AI Camp enables students to explore the field of AI before going to college or locking themselves into a career path. This avoids the pitfalls of traditional higher education through enabling students to learn through doing with immersive project-based programs. AI Camp offers scholarships to their summer camp to students who get a lot of value from it. AI Camp gave more than 10% of their students a full scholarship last year and roughly 60% of students a partial scholarship. Students between the ages of 13 to 18 can apply for a summer camp scholarship through the link in the description to this video. And people outside the ages of 13 to 18 with outstanding experience can apply to teach at AI Camp as mentors too. The camp can also lead to an amazing internship opportunity where upon successful completion of the program AI Camp themselves hire some of their students to perform mission critical tasks at both AI Camp and other top startups in Silicon Valley. For more information and to apply for AI Camp's summer scholarship, click the link in the description below in this video. Right, let's get back and see how we're going to control this. I've now added controllers for the shoulder and elbow axis and because of the differential drive we've got one which moves the servos in opposite directions and one controller that moves them in the same direction to control each of the two axes. I put feedback pots on those axes as well which have been added on to bridge past that axes from the base up to the shoulder and from the shoulder to the elbow. So both of those now have feedback pots to compare in the same way as the waist. As I showed my co takes care of controlling the differential drive for me and each axis has its own feedback pot. So I'm essentially running a position control algorithm to keep those axes at the required demand position. Because both axes are driven by the same two clutches though as I move one axis there will be some creep in the other axis. However, due to the positioning pot on the algorithm running on that axis, it will automatically compensate and attempt to modify its position to reposition it and hold the correct position. If the arm were driven by three independent motors instead of three clutches, then this would happen seamlessly. In this case though, the clutches take time to respond, and in some cases they have to pass through the dead spot in order to compensate and hold the right position. This causes a non-trivial delay in correcting the position of the axes as I move one or the other intentionally, which you can see as I move the arm around. I have three clutches and three axes, so had I built the mechanics so that each clutch was only linked to one axis, this issue wouldn't have existed in the first place, and they all would have run nice and smoothly like the waist axis, which is probably the most satisfying to see move of the whole build. I'm still pretty sure that there wouldn't have been enough torque at the waist axis though without both clutches driving it, and getting the motion up to the elbow without the shoulder motion affecting it would be super tricky. So it's by no means perfect, but I'm pretty happy that the basic principle of it works and I'm super happy with that waist rotation. The other axes work okay, but one of the things I really wanted to do with this was try and run inverse kinematics on it. Inverse kinematics means being able to position the end effector of the arm in a known coordinate system, typically XYZ Cartesian coordinates, and then calculate the required joint angles for each joint of the arm to achieve that position. I normally do this with simple trigonometry functions and I made a specific video about this using a simple servo driven arm. This is also the same as positioning the feet in my robot dog projects. In order to move the arm in straight lines from one position to another, this of course requires moving more than one joint at a time. I have position and velocity control on my clutch driven arm, but I also have some specific issues which is going to make driving multiple joints to the required positions simultaneously difficult. The main issue is that my clutches have physical end stops at some point, but I need to drive the two joints with a differential drive. If I want to drive both joints in certain directions simultaneously, then at some point the clutch can't move any further to add on some velocity to drive the second axis because the clutch is already at its maximum rotation. This means we would frequently see a huge lag in one or the other joints achieving the position. The other main issue though is the amount of backlash in the mechanics of the whole system due to the gaps in the gears that make up the entire drive. 
This is a very large amount of movement which is particularly noticeable when the shoulder passes its centre point because it kind of flops over and causes the arm to oscillate as it keeps overshooting its position. Probably using belt drives and rollers to translate the motion instead of bevel gears would have been a better solution and this type of drive is frequently used in commercial arms. Altogether though, I'm happy enough I can just about position the three axes as I wish using the clutches, and the continuously variable transmission clutches themselves have worked out pretty well out of all the mechanics that make up the whole build. So I'm not actually too unhappy with this, at least we can position and velocity control each of the joints, so I'm pretty happy with the clutch system, obviously the rest of the mechanics leave um, a bit more to be desired, so probably that needs to be revisited, although it's really tricky actually to get all the motion up to all the joints just with mechanics, which is why it's the way it is, as I said in the video. It'd be pretty good to have a walking robot, like a robot dog or a big hexapod with one big brushless motor in the middle and lots of clutches to get to all the joints. I'm not sure if the ball clutches would actually be a good idea in the long term because they'll probably wear out because they do rely on friction. There are various other types of continuously variable transmissions that could be used though. We just need to be very careful that we can go into reverse and that we got a dead spot to switch the axis off without continuous rubbing so that they don't wear out even more so that's something else to investigate uh, for now i'm going to leave it as it is and if i do anything like this again it'll be a complete redesign i am going to publish the cad and code though so if you'd like to have a look at it or try and build your own or make a better one then you can and that's on github and the links in the description to this video so if you'd like to support me through patreon or youtube channel members then those links are in the description as well and patrons and youtube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early including sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up all right, that's all for now.